Well, we're at uh, Mesa Grande Cultural Park, which is the center of what used to be a very large Hohokam village, spreading for over a mile along the terrace of the river here. The Hohokam were a really unique Native American indigenous group. Uh, they inhabited this area from about the time of Christ to 1450 AD. The Hohokam really, their hallmark of what they're known for were, was the construction of enormous irrigation systems here in the Salt River Valley. They built canals that are of immense size. Uh, we did an excavation near here where we found a uh, prehistoric canal that measured 45 feet wide and 15 feet deep. So these things were massive constructions on the landscape. They were incredible engineering feats, and it took a tremendous amount of organization, social and political organization, to put the people together to, to build something like that. The structure we're standing in front of today is uh, known as the Mesa Grande Platform Mound. It's basically a solid platform or a temple mound that was built by the Hokam. Probably around uh, 1000 to 1100 AD, they started building it and completed it around 1450 AD. This, this mound measures a little bit longer and a little bit wider than a football field and 27 feet tall. The architecture seems to be one that looks at um, access. Certain people have access to some rooms, the public has access to a major plaza, and other areas are restricted. And we believe that it was actually a temple mount. This area is on the very northeast corner of the platform mound. It's an area where Frank Hamilton Cushing first excavated the site in 1887. He came here with an expedition to look for the origins of the Zuni people and did some of the first studies of the ancient Hohokam. Uh, he began digging here and he says in his director's notes that the people of Mesa got very interested in what he was doing and they began digging all around him. Uh, which frustrated him and he headed down to Chandler to excavate a site he called El Pueblo de los Muertos, the City of the Dead. Looking at this area of the mound, we've been able to see some of the building episodes as they enlarge the mound. We have a wall here that's uh, just shy of five feet thick, a massive wall to hold back all the soil that created the mound itself. One thing we found here was a mysterious doorway. Uh, we don't know what it means. It may have been a room buried inside the mound, but that's something we're trying to figure out with our archaeological work today. The mound is made out of material called caliche. It's a calcium carbonate hardpan that develops below the desert soils. And when they mix that, it became kind of a primitive concrete. And so they used that to create walls. Uh, to build the mound then, they would create walls. It would look like a room, but it wouldn't have any windows or doors. And then they would fill that up with soil to create the artificial platform of the mound. Well, I think the, the Hohokam lifestyle was one of uh, a great deal of work and effort. Uh, when you look at the building of the canals, a tremendous amount of excavation that had to be done by hand. Uh, the canals actually took water off of the Salt River and brought it out across the landscape. And the engineering on these things is just incredible. Uh, they had to get a certain drop or gradient to the canals. And so they had to be mapped onto the landscape in, a, in just the right spot. The gradient drop on the canals is about one to two feet per mile. The bounty of the Salt River and the irrigated fields supported a large population. Uh, so they were pretty, uh, pretty large and successful group and they remained in this lifestyle for over a thousand years. Uh, we're standing in the reconstruction of a Hohokam ball court. Uh, the Hohokam, like people in Mesoamerica, had ball courts and played a ball game. 
Uh, there people know it from the Aztec with the big uh, stone ring up on the side of the court. Try to get the ball in it, not using your hands. Hohokam Ball Court, or the Mesoamerican Ball Game, was more than just a sporting event. It had a lot of implications in terms of religion and ideology. The games were seen as a battle between the forces of day and night, light and dark, and they were considered to be kind of predict the future of, of the people. When it comes to knowing about the ball court and the ball game, a lot of that is done through ethnographic uh, analogy. We, we look historically at the records of the Spanish when they came into the New World. We see what was going on in the Aztec area. They described it. It was first person descriptions of what was going on. And then we look at the similarities with, with the courts, and we can see them change as we go from the Aztec area up north and finally to the Hohokam area. And we can see a continual change in morphology, how the courts are built, and we can see that it's the same thing. And then we can look at the records and figure out how the ball games were played. We find similar features here. One of the features of a Mesoamerican ball game our ball court is to have a pit in the middle with offerings. And when we excavate the Hohokam courts, they have a pit right in the middle with offerings in it, often turquoise and beads and things like that. When we look at the Hohokam, the history of the Hohokam is a history of water and resources and how we use resources. And as they built more and more of these big irrigation systems, they finally tipped a critical balance in their most important resource, the use of the water. They were using too much of it. And so we can look historically at what we've done. The Hokam reached a certain size and then they left the area. We started doing agriculture and by 1891 we hit that same size and we began to have farmers leave because they were overstressing the water resource. I think it tells us that we really have to start planning a much better for the future and watching our balance between population and resources and um, really think about how we're going to go forward into the future.